Moving on again to news concerning my favourite football club in the world, Manchester United, and the ongoing soap opera that doesn't seem to ever end. We got this news courtesy of Daily Mail, which is just broken on social media now. And I think there's been an update concerning Harry Gregorio's team, clarifying that it was a team thing and not actually him that pressed it. But regardless, this just further highlights just how much of a shit show we are as a club, and as a football team, as an organisation, whatever it may be. So the headline is as follows. Manchester United fans spot Captain Harry Maguire liking an Instagram post about one to wake Cristiano, Cristiano Ronaldo being upset at a 25% wage cut. So was it him or one of his social media team? Man United fans have slammed Harry Maguire and questioned the captain's credentials after it appeared in like he appeared to like an Instagram post about Cristiano Ronaldo's anger at the club's rumoured 25% wage cut. There had already been calls for the England defender to lose the permanent armband after the difficult season and those cries have now increased following this apparent social media blunder. Sport Bible posted a picture of Ronaldo alongside a caption explaining that he reportedly upset about a 25% wage cut given to Man United players after their failure to qualify for the Champions League. And you can see the post here taken from Sport Bible's Instagram account. It's got Ronaldo's face here shouting and it says Christian Ronaldo is reportedly upset with 25% wage cut received by all players when Man United failed to qualify for the Champions League next season. The five-time Ballon winner will now see his 480-a-week salary reduced to 360 as United pay, sorry, as United play in the Europa League, right? And of course, you see Harry Maguire's um, Instagram account, the Harry Maguire 93, had liked that post, right? And it's the two of them there on the pitch. Now, the funny thing about this is that, for me personally, just speaking about this on the open, it's just a weird faux pas because, no, let's just start from the open, let's start from the top. I find it really interesting that Harry Maguire is one of the most hated United players to ever have worn the shirt in such a short period of time. He hasn't been in the club that long, he doesn't have a big personality really, he's not really a um, dirty player on the pitch, and for the most part... The reason why he's hated is because of how bad people think he is as a player and how maybe overinflated his transfer fee was. It has, but then, of course, his personality also and how his family acts on social media hasn't really helped things either. His family, I don't really have that much bad things to say about because I think regardless of what you think of him as a player, as a person, I think his family are well within their rights to, 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 you know, to shout from the rafters of how much they support him, how much they love him and highlight all the good about him because he's their family member. That makes complete sense. But I just don't see how he doesn't understand how he's perceived online, even if he doesn't agree with it, and try to maybe temper it so that it can alleviate some of the pressure that is on him on the football pitch. Because that's part of the reason why he gets so much pelters or so much unnecessary attention on the pitch is because people generally don't like him as a person. And a lot of it has to come with his antics online, his comments, celebrations, the things he doesn't say, you know, when he doesn't come out and give interviews, when the United get drubbed, you know, he's not nowhere to be found. And then suddenly when United win, there he is talking about performances and stuff. And then, you know, basically saying that he's not here to analyze the game and all this sort of nonsense, whatever and crappy. But then the other thing about it as well that's interesting is that is in terms of the dynamic between Christian Ronaldo and Harry Maguire, it was fairly obvious as soon as Ronaldo signed for the club that there would be an issue between the both of them because most United fans who are sensible didn't think Harry Maguire should have ever got the captain's armband. Whether you think Harry Maguire is worth the, the money he was uh, purchased for, whether you think he played well for a period of time, whether you think the criticism against him is a little bit unwarranted and a little bit over the top, no United fan really with sense sat there and thought Harry Maguire would be a good pick for a captain. Now, it's not his fault because United are in a bit of a unique position where they kind of exhausted all their options for captains and they only had to give it to him because they couldn't give it to Paul Bar because of this contract dispute and the fact they didn't sign a new contract. They couldn't give it to De Gea because they stripped him of it once before. Like, we basically put ourselves into a corner where there weren't really many options available and we had to only give it to somebody who maybe was the marquee signing, leading from the back, England, whatever it may be, right? It made complete sense in that way. But in hindsight, it was a bad decision. It was also a bad decision to then sign Ronaldo and to not clarify what the decision was. Because I feel like the club basically fucked Maguire over in that respect. Signing someone like Ronaldo of his calibre and his kind of personality would automatically warrant him to get the captain's armband because of what he's achieved in the game. So there maybe should have been a conversation with the club in the same way the club had a conversation with Martial when Ibrahimovic signed. And we're like, no, we need Mar Ibrahimovic to be our number nine so that we can sell loads of shirts. Martial, you're going to be here for a while anyway. Just take the number 11 for now 
now, give Ibra a number nine and we can keep moving. Even though, you know, Marshall was pissed about it, commercially and all that sort of stuff behind the scenes, just to kind of get it out of the way, it kind of made sense. There should have been some sort of conversation between the both of Harry Maguire's camp and Cristiano Ronaldo's camp. Like, okay, cool. I'm going to put this story out that how I went to, to like, you know, um, purposely or of my own volition, um, rescind the captain's armband because you know a Ballon d'Or winner was coming into a club and I wanted us him to lead us into the Champions League and into kind of other glories so I gave him the captain's armband for the next two years under the proviso once he leaves I'll get it back again or something along those lines the fact that it didn't happen and they left Maguire and others to do it themselves in the changing room and then we also started to play really badly and then of course we have all the clicks we already have established in the changing room between some of the English players some of the Portuguese players some of the players out there since before flipping Oli whatever it may be right all those things kind of then added to the cluster of situation we've got at the moment where essentially it looks like they clearly don't get along so it's not surprising that because they don't get along the Harry Maguire would see this post and forget that he was Harry Maguire and like it because he definitely agrees with it. He definitely does agree that maybe in his head he feels like Ronaldo's taking the piss out of the club. Maybe in his head he feels like Ronaldo thinks he's running the club. And maybe in his head he feels like Ronaldo essentially undermined his authority and maybe negatively affected his, you know, um, his uh, standard of play when he was playing during the season. I can see that happening because Maguire is definitely an eternal victim. He doesn't accept any personal responsibility for his play. Anytime you've seen him getting interviewed and someone kind of presses him on him, I think a recent interview that really pissed everybody off, that pissed me off, the one where he said something along the lines of, oh, I keep getting picked so I can't be bad, was an absolutely idiotic thing to say in, in, you know, in, in an interview. Obviously, the interview prior to that went into something along the lines of, oh, I'm not here to analyse the game. Like, just an absolute cretin of a man. So it wouldn't surprise me if... Behind closed doors, he absolutely does blame Cristiano's arrival for his poor form and for the fact that no one likes him in terms of the fan base. Now, the long and short of it is, as United captain, you can't be doing this. The fact that he did this on a public platform, using his Instagram account, and the fact that now his team are trying to come back around and now and say, oh, he didn't do it, and it was a team decision, or a team thing that did it, or an intern that did it, it's bullshit. Because when players like things that we that are non-controversial or like things that are kind of banterish or whatever it may be, people laugh about it, take screenshot about it, and they kind of enjoy the positive kind of affirmation and feedback they get from it. The moment what they like is a bit controversial and maybe not so something they should be liking, suddenly it's an intern's decision or intern's fault. I think the fact that he's done this should be grounds enough for him to get the captain's arm by a strip from him anyway. I think it would have happened regardless because I think at the moment, the fact that there hasn't been any clarification that he's going to stay as captain is probably proof to me that most likely Eric Ten Hag is going to pick his own captain anyway. You know, because there's a lot of, you know, talk around his name. There's a lot of rumours. Um, of course, you know, he came off the back of that poor season. If you really wanted to kind of set a sort of precedent and put your flag in the ground and say, hey, this is how we're going to move from now on. You just come out and say, yeah, Harry Maguire is my captain. Um, he's a leader. I see him as an inf in influential part of the team and the squad, integral member of the squad, whatever it may be. And we can't wait for a new season so you can kind of prove it really wrong, whatever it may be. That didn't happen. So the fact that that didn't happen shows me that most likely, if there hasn't been the decision made already, there's definitely some conversations about who should be the captain going forward. Now, is it wise to give the captain's armband to Ronaldo for one season, knowing full well he's going to retire or maybe go to another club or go to Spice Sport in Lisbon at the end of next season? Probably not. But <coughs> unfortunately, this is what happens when you sign a caliber of player like Cristiano Ronaldo. When you sign players of this sort of ilk, what you end up doing is that you end up essentially making a rod for your own back. Well, let me try and get my flipping uh, tablets because I'm, I'm flipping over here. I'm hoping like an absolute savage because I didn't take my intelligence savage. But essentially, that's what you end up doing. You end up making a rod for your own back once you start signing players like this because they demand a different level of treatment, a different level of attention, a different level of care, and in some cases, indulgence. And now that Ronaldo, because again, the time of Harry Maguire is fucking awful. Off the back of Ronaldo essentially telling the club that he wants to leave, <clears throat> this is such bad timing because the club clearly don't want him to go because if you take a hit on the Champions League money and you're playing in Europa League, but then you have Ronaldo to sell shirts, you might be able to offset some of the losses that you're going to incur. 
but you don't want to lose Ronaldo and also not have Champions League football if you're a commercially minded club like United. Other clubs that just care about sporting achievement wouldn't give a crap, right? After the first season that Ronaldo was here and we didn't finish in the Champions League spot and knowing Ronaldo wants to still play at the highest level and win trophies, it should have been just a, hey, thanks for coming back. Thanks for the memories. Thanks for, you know, rekindling our love for the club again. Shake hands, keep it moving and you roll. But the fact that Ronaldo, the fact that Man United aren't that club anymore, I don't see the club or the people on the board letting Ronaldo go. And I also don't see this ending well for Harry Maguire because they're going to indulge Ronaldo way more than they're ever going to indulge him, even though they spent 80 million hard-earned great British pounds on him in the first place, Harry Maguire. So it's a real effed up situation. But again, for me, like I said, I'm just intrigued by it because I feel like Harry Maguire hasn't been at a club that long and somehow he's ended up being more unlike than somebody like a Maran Fellaini or something like like you know and Fellaini I absolutely hated but mostly because he was fucking shit and he represented everything that I hated about United at that time right mediocrity um uh it will make do just flub flubbering mess of a, of a situation of a player but even him at the end of it I kind of ended up in you know endearing myself to him because he was only doing his best anyway do you know what I'm saying? It wasn't his fault he got signed. It wasn't his fault he got keep, he kept getting played. It kind of is what it was. But Harry Maguire somehow I don't know how he done it. Like he went from being just um, you know, run on the mill centre back at Leicester City, who people kind of rate. Don't get me wrong. Then as soon as he comes to Man United, he's under the big lights. People immediately think he's a cunt, and it hasn't stopped. And it's probably going to get worse, especially once we start the new season without Ronaldo. It probably will end up getting worse for him going forward. So um, prayers and thoughts go out to all those guys. But again. Eric Ten Hag has walked into an absolute supper of, of a club. Things are probably going to get worse before they get better. And yeah, man, I just can't wait for all this stuff to fucking be over for now. I really, really can't.